you there for a second. Robin Slim Show. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Now we can. <laughs> this is Michael Frost. Michael Frost. What's going on, oh, dude? Right. <laughs> I can't What's tell you. On, my friend? What's happening? I can't tell you how many people asked me today because I put you up as question marks. Everyone's like, do you have a, a free spot? There were so many people that wanted to call. I'm like, no, it's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I was actually, uh, I was taking a walk in the nearby uh, neighborhood and, uh, damn, I couldn't get through. I didn't know what was going on. I kept seeing the Robin Sloop show was not available. I don't I'm know, like, man. Oh, is that what came up? Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I was excited. We were accepting a call and, like, I just reset Skype and had a couple issues, but at least we're good to go now, man. That's cool. I, I got a joke for you just to start this off. Two Jews walk into a bar. The third one ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you guys had to think about that for a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it took us, took us a moment there, but you know that's too good for us. That joke. <laughs> well, how how all four are you doing? I was watching, I was listening, and I was laughing my ass off all day. Oh, great. Thank, Thank you, you, dude. Thank you. And you're from Chicago, correct? I'm originally from Chicago. That wonderful cesspool that sits in the center of the country and claims to be such great things, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, ever since Ronald Emanuel, I mean, he was Obama's puppet. He, Ronald Emanuel used to be the uh, president of uh, Chicago Public Schools. The worst thing that you can imagine, Chicago Public Schools, just making young people stupid. And then he goes off to Washington becomes his educational advisor, and then comes back and runs the city. It's already fucked up. Oh, I awesome. can't understand it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, too, Michael, I was I was searching you earlier, and there's some uh, Australian jerk-off named Michael Frost. You know, all he writes about is God. Yeah, well, no, 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 uh, I'm not the evangelist. I was like, oh, no, who's this? I was like, please, this I cannot am. be Michael. <laughs> no, 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 no. I can do if you want. <laughs> I think your phone's well, breaking up, dude. No, it's probably not the table blessing you're going to watch. <laughs> I think your phone's breaking up, dude. All right, well, let me move. Let me move. <laughs> Sorry, I got a lot of property here, and I'll try to move away where I can get better reception. And, uh, uh, is it better? No, it's real garbled. Yeah, I know. Well, so, thank T Mobile for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> T Mobile, man, I swear to God, they owe me probably about a thousand blow jobs. Is this better? A little bit, not much. Okay, well, I'm going to keep walking in this to see what <laughs> All right, you see where it takes you, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. We need some, like, walking music or something. Yeah, you know? like the Incredible Hulk walking music. Right, like the Incredible Hulk <laughs> walking music. Yeah, actually, that's what I think about. Remember when I said, you know, I used to actually watch the show, and I would say that at the end, you hear the music, and he's walking, he's, he was hitchhiking. I remember I felt so sad as a kid. I had too much empathy as a child, but that used to mess me up. <laughs> <laughs> it is really it's, sad music, dude. It is, yeah. Brings it to oh, I mean, come on. It's like, why can't somebody give him a home or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Just give him a car. This is the fucking Hulk. Yeah, really? <laughs> He's a scientist, bitchy. also. Give him a car. Why can't he afford one, Bruce Banner? What a jerk off. Yeah. <laughs> He's saving people. He's green, but it's smashing. Come on. Give him <laughs> he could just pick that thing up. Yeah, really? Crush it like a soda can. I think I'm a big guy to show I've been watching and I'm watching live today. Very funny. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you, dude. Thank you. Uh, uh, how many books do you have out? Well, <laughs> my name, we got, oh, let's see what's coming up in uh, 2016. One, two, three, four. There's five books coming out that's coming out in 2016. Uh, I write a lot of names, uh, simply because, well, 
the genre of this goes with what the personality might be with the story. Those ones, well, I guess there's total 20 out there somewhere. Oh, wow. Jeez. Under other names. That's cool. How, uh, how long have you been writing for? Since I was 11. So we're talking, let's see, I'm 42. Long time. Wow. Yeah, I saw, I, I saw it said you had a 389-page novel by the, the age, by 17. Yeah, that's when I first wrote a fantasy book back then. I uh, had it out, and um, I thought I was accomplished. And then suddenly uh, the Michael and me, the real Michael and me, woke up one day and said, nah, you got to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> With all of the shit with dragons and everything else like that, no, I woke up and uh, it was weird. It was weird. Um, I could actually, the book Stodd. I, I, I know you read the um, the interview by D.D. Collins, great woman, great writer. I have a lot of respect for her. But Stodd, this is, I actually still remember the exact line I wrote. And I'm not in front of a computer here. I'm actually out here walking against some people riding bikes and some kids who are just, uh, trying out for their football team. So I can tell you the very first line of how the book starts, if you'd like to hear it. Yes. Sure. yes. Oh, yeah. The wound that happened on a day of July 7, 1963. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I got somebody asking me a question. <laughs> Hold on one second. Tell them I said she's a cunt. Excuse me. One second. <laughs> <laughs> That way is east. The wound that was slowly developed into whole, the wound that was slowly developed into a horrible malignant disease happened on the day of July seventh, nineteen sixty three with a group of kids playing guns. And I wrote that line. And I wrote that line and I stared at it for on my typewriter at seventeen for about a week and a half. <laughs> and I had no idea why I wrote it. Wow. But that became the beginning of the book Stod. That actually took 20 years to write. Oh, boy. I, wow. written, I wrote a book in 52 days, a 112,000 word book. I wrote it in 52 days. Trust me, I was a hermit. I think mean, I was sitting wow. on shit. <laughs> I didn't shave. <laughs> I didn't eat. The flies swarmed around my head like, you know, what's his name? Uh, the little dirty kid on the Peanuts game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> big Bang. <laughs> yeah, big Bang. Yeah, big Bang. Exactly. And um, I wrote. You know, and I've written books in, in, in time, but for some reason, Stodd took forever. And I think probably because I wasn't mature enough to write it. Yeah. I really wasn't. Wow. Um, I wrote about very adult things, and yet I was about to go to the Navy. I was 17 when I went in the Navy. Then I got out, you know, made a family, had my daughter, my beautiful daughter. And um, then at 32, I turn around and go right back in the, mili in the military. And here's the thing, MAV wife stands for it. Never again volunteer yourself. You're like a fucking idiot. Here I go. I go back in the fucking military oh, when I'm 32 man. years old. What the hell was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. What I saw, the hell was I thinking? I saw, too, it said you, uh, you were a microwave and satellite platform communications engineer. Is that, is that what you learned in the military? Uh, well, with no military, the first went in, I was ground radio. My job was to, and ground radio at that time, that's why the school was so long, they assumed everything that used to be ground radar, everything else. So we talked to planes, basically. But it was ground radar, SATCOM, we acquired it all. That's why the school was so damn long. It used to be like a, like two years before, it was like a five-month course, and now it was an 11-month course down at uh, Keith Air Force Base, down in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi. Well, then I get to my base, which was in uh, Ohio, and I was a reservist, and I stayed on for five and a half years, not by my choice, huh. uh, because wow. I got assigned to the 3rd Herd, an Army detachment, and I went from ground radio to forward combat communication. So I was in, I did in total five tours in and out of Afghanistan just drop bombs on people. Sometimes they were a few hundred yards away and you got to watch them drop. Wow. Oh, geez. <laughs> Holy shit, that's awesome. It is awesome, but uh it's scary as the time. It. And it's uh it just sticks with you. Yeah. Wow, dude. Is uh is horror your favorite genre to write? 
It is my favorite genre right now, but it used to scare the shit out of me. Trust me. Uh, when I was a little kid, uh, everything's scary. I mean, think about it. When you were a little kid, I mean, if you didn't like horror, how many times you there with as soon as a commercial for the next Friday 13th, you put your fingers in ears and close your eyes, you went, ah, oh, yeah. and you let your fingers go and you open your eyes right when the scariest part happened on the commercial. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. And then you're screwed all night. You're screwed all night. You know, you leave the light on if, if your parents let you. But if not, the shadows, oh, God, your eyes, is, you know. So horror was something, I mean, the first, what I would consider a horror film that I willingly saw. Not with my dad, with the original Night of the Living Dead, um, which is a great movie. I, that's where I wish a lot of these uh, Walking Dead things would go back to. Mm. Um, Vision of the Pod People. Remember that? Oh, yes. The body Snatchers? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, they made that. Uh, that, that oh, my God. Voice. <laughs> and those two commercials that they kept playing every time of the commercial. And it was, it was, um, it was for underalls. You know, the underwear was like, ding, ding. You know, do you saw the ass cheeks go ding, ding? Because yeah. they're all just yeah. held up the butt. Mm. Yeah. And then there was also Willike. So Willite was like kinky tape to me, forbidden. I, I, and I saw Willite in the store when I went to the store with my mother. I was scared to sell because Willite scared the hell out of me. <laughs> and so they're under all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so the idea of a woman's butt was like scary at one point for me. Not now, but at one point it was. You know, I associated, oh, well, if, if I look at a woman's butt, I'm going to be a pop person. I don't want to be a pop person. <laughs> and, my, and, my dad loved, and my dad loved cooking okra. Imagine right after he watched, I'm not fucking kidding here, right after, right after, oh we saw him mention the pot people, my dad cooks okra that night. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> this is a child abuse, man, this is a child abuse. That is pretty traumatic. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> wow. Anyway, um, horror came after the fact, and once, once I tasted the blood, I couldn't let it go. Right. <laughs> and, um... I, I had actually, I wrote a short story when I was, when I, the line was still I wrote a, a short story called Exact Change Only, which was horror, and I realized that the whole fantasy world was no longer something for me. Hmm. I mean, fantasy almost seems like it's oversaturated at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that too. Like fantasy. Um, I wanted to comment on, though, you were talking about how you were a big fan of uh, Night of the Living Dead, which, sadly, I haven't seen, but I did see... Uh, the original Dawn of the Dead, and that is one of my favorite zombie movies. And like you were saying, how yeah. you wish they would go back to like that formula. That like those zombies, I don't care how goofy it was. Like it was funny seeing like the rednecks shoot them. Like they're all yeah. drinking beers and shooting these zombies. Oh, that, was, that was great with the rednecks shooting them. Oh yeah, it was great. And then in the mall when they're all like just running them over and there's goofy music and playing. But still, that type of zombie is the scariest zombie in the world. Yeah, just to they think were. that like. When you die, you become just this gray, like slow, pointless creature. Like that's true horror. I don't Nazis. like the fast well, zombies. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, like what the yeah, fuck? not, that's, not that's, these that's like you know. Freak me well, out. you know nowadays, <clears throat> especially The Walking Dead. Actually, that was a series. Okay, here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna piss off a lot of my zombie <laughs> followers on oh, Twitter. Oh boy. <laughs> a zombie apocalypse. The chances that happen. Okay, outside of the idea that there might be a condition or a disease that people, like, which they have proven, will start chewing on people, the whole zombie apocalypse won't happen. And here's the thing. The Walking Dead. They really got to step up their, their, their writing. Because unless they start making a hybrid where there's, like, people that are that were basically survivors that had been infected, that partially immune, but yet they still have sort of the zombie thing. Guess what? Okay, you you have to have blood pumping to walk. Come on, come on. Think about it. Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. You have no. Okay. You, so you have no heart that's pumping. You did the whole thing with the first season or second season where you went to the CDC and the guy he had his wife. You saw the picture of his wife and he shot his wife in the face. You know, come on. Here's the thing. Muscles need blood. Okay? So how do you walk it? And here's the 
thing. In no zombie movies, there's not a single fucking zombie. I just get a ladder. I just go up and get a ladder and call the tree. Because you never see a zombie climb a fucking tree. So zombies can't climb. And they have no buoyancy. They're just a fucking boat. And it's off the shore. That was so back in the day. I mean, come on. What was that uh, movie uh, that just came out a couple of years ago? Uh... World War Z? Yes, oh, that's yeah. what pissed me off in that. They were climbing yeah, walls they were doing and shit. The I haven't seen right that yeah. one. I haven't no, seen okay, that one. World War Z, if you don't hear all of you guys over there, bitch, you're lying on me. That's the only type of zombie-type, quote, apocalypse that can happen, is that there's some sort of bacteria or something that makes people crazy and start acting like that and having almost like PCP, superhuman strength. That's the only type. Walking, I, you know, you just get graveyard, and also people start getting up. Uh, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> not to mention those walking, zo- those dead zombies, like stuff like crows and like fucking buzzards would be like chewing on them in an instant. Exactly. Oh, they were already <laughs> dead. It was yeah. already dead. Exactly. Oh, I've yeah. never seen the show. Exactly. Wow. Then, okay, so here's the thing. I live in Illinois, and my sister used to go to University of Illinois down in uh, Southern Illinois. You're fighting Illinois. And I would drive down there a couple times a month, mostly because of my dad at the time. He was worried about my older sister, they were twins, to bring them things. And there used to be Chinook Air Force Base, but they're in Rantoul Air Force Base. And they shut it down. And within that six months, I right, used to always get off at Rantoul to fill up gas because it was cheap and get my pop at the time because I wouldn't drink coffee. I was a teeny. And, uh... When she goes down, six months later, you used to be able to pass the airfield, and you still could. The entire airfield was covered with grass from all the seeds that had dropped and everything because the airfield wasn't used. Here you got The Walking Dead, and already, I mean, I got all four, four seasons. Well, I got the first four seasons. Then all of a sudden you see they're walking on the streets. They should be covered with grass, and here they are walking. And it's like I look over and I say, wow, somebody mowed that lawn? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'd be shitty. And there's a season, there's an episode with, you know, you got, you got Daryl, he's out there trying to fight for a half a rabbit. Jesus, there's nobody out there hunting them. There's nobody out there driving. They, they, no one's hitting rabbits. There's rabbits everywhere. Rabbits fucking left and right, and where are they? And they're, like, hunting. Why? Slowly. Man, there'd be food everywhere. Come on, now. <laughs> let's, let's talk some truth here. Michael, I want to ask you, too. You said your father was an author, right? He was an author. Uh, he was actually also second line to Tuskegee Airmen in World War II. Oh, and wow. Shit. Wow. Um, and I can't imagine the racism. Black man, back then, my dad was born in 1922. Uh, his birthday was just actually on the 20th. His, my older twin sisters and my dad have the same birthday. He always wanted the twin daughters. He got them on his birthday. I was fucked before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he was second line to ski airman wow. in the Army Air Corps. Uh, very proud of my dad. And it's not a reason I went in the military, but he was a writer. He was a writer. Uh, he wrote a lot of poetry during the Civil Rights era. And he wrote, he had a book. That came out called uh, My Black Fist, and I was uh, I was very proud because actually when I was like 24, somewhere in there, my dad had asked me if I could it, if I can just go through the whole book and make it digital. Oh it's been wow! Out of print for so many years, so I can to then write verbatim all his poems. So then I end up knowing them. That's cool. And uh, and stories. Nice. So yeah, my dad was a writer. That's cool, dude. What um, what are some of your favorite authors? My favorite author, authors? <laughs> well, I like old Stephen King. Okay. You know, back before he went before he went crazy. Well, where, where's before the point? Went... Where's the point that he went crazy? Because like the only Stephen Stephen King I've read was it, and I loved it. I thought that was great. Oh, it, That's it, old. I'm gonna tell you, man. If you like it, and I know you guys are there, I'm holding up my coffee. My Kegel coffee stainless steel mug right now to you, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. it honestly was a true. I actually people might get mad about this, but I actually compared it to the Bible because every time you <laughs> if you ever go back and reread it, you'll read something that you didn't read before. I it's actually, yeah. I at one point was looking for books. I was like, you know what? Let me see if I can find like a list of books that will change your life. And any books, any list you ever find of books that will change your life, it is listed on that book. I liked uh, Gerald's Game. Did you ever uh, read that one? 
I did not read that one. The last one that I thought was his great, a great book of his was Needful Things. And the only, I've never read that one. The only ones I ever read from Needful him. Needful Things was Wicked, You Have the Devil, and they actually followed it pretty well in the movie. Yeah. You know, and they, they actually followed pretty well. The one that I got, the one movie, though, that I got really pissed about, I actually broke, I got it from Redbox and I broke the fucking CD. <laughs> 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 nice. Was The Mist. I they never saw that. the story. It was based off of a novella by Stephen King called The Mist. Okay. I think it was in, uh, uh, what's, what's your short story book? It was, uh, damn. It's one, maybe the one with the hand on the, uh, it was either um, Night Shift or the one with the monkey on the fucker front. Uh, anyway, but it was a novella. They followed the script exactly. They followed the story. And then the, they changed the ending. They Hollywood the ending, and I got pissed off, and I threw the CD, literally, against my wall, <laughs> and then put it back in the red box thing with a note, charge me. <laughs> <laughs> I was pissed. Yeah. I was, I was seriously pissed. I, I hate when Hollywood does that shit. Don't yeah. Hollywoodize. We're not stupid. We're not, we're not stupid people. The thing about Hollywood about the cartoons we grew up and watched, where you have a black ball with a wick in it, and it's sparkling, we know it's a bomb, but they write the word bomb on it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? We know it's a bomb? We know it's going to blow some shit up? We're going to kill some people with this shit? You know, why are we coyotes should be watch out? you got to put TNT on the stuff? How many kids watch a thousand of these cartoons all with TNT? You know, do it the first time. You don't have to keep doing it. And I hate the fact that they have to lead us like children. Yeah. Over hand. I have stories that, honestly, you don't know. And that was the thing about The Mist. That's why I respected Stephen King. At the end of The Mist, in the original story, he had been writing this whole thing as basically a... He wrote it down to sort of like a journal, and he was going to leave it in the hotel lobby. <laughs> So if anybody, anybody came across that hotel lobby, he said what direction you're going, they think the miss is standing that way. And it gave the reader an ability to make whatever story they wanted to in their mind. No, Hollywood had to make closure. You know what, you don't close your close, close my dick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of I kind of felt that, like, and a, a lot of people disagree with me like this, so I don't know if you've ever seen uh, The Watchmen, but it was originally a graphic oh, novel. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Originally a graphic novel written by Alan Moore. Yeah, they took the squid yes. out. Of it. <laughs> yeah. The Watchmen. I'm not a big betrayal. Yes, I, yes. I never read the original. Everybody gets so. mad at me every time I complain about it, but I'm like, you don't I, understand. I, like, but, their reasoning for it, for changing, getting rid of the giant monster at the end. Spoiler alert. Exactly. Here's the thing. I have the original. Right. Original graphic novel of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes. Oh, yeah. like yes, I crazy money. I bought it on whim back in like 1989-90. Yeah. Somewhere there when the original graphic novel. And then I saw this whole span of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they, they, they childified it. You know, they, they yeah. wanted to make it for kids. I mean, shit, all these turtles were killing people. It was bloody, the yeah, original. Yes, it was. The it was, it was dark. Dark. They were very and violent. And the original graphic novel, full thing from beginning to end, and it's got little wrinkles and creases, and even I got it assessed, and the thing is worth $5,000 right now. And they're like, guys, like, even the guys like, do you want to sell this? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was part of my... You know, it's like crazy. So I mean, it was like it was, it was crazy. Mm. You know, people people just come back and they they, they say, well, we gotta we gotta take your hand and walk you through like this is. Yeah. Oh, what was that? What was that movie that was uh, partially black? Oh, Pleasantville. Ever seen Pleasantville? Oh, no. Yes, no, I have. That movie's that, fucking. Is that Tobey Maguire or something? <laughs> Pleasantville is like an example of where America is about to go. Yeah. It's basically, right down the toilet. <laughs> Because we live in this false sense of society, false sense of everything, and we're happy, we smile, we look at our kids, everything is perfect, black and white, and then reality sets in, and then it fucks your world. <laughs> you can't make fun of anybody either, man. Like, yeah. everyone gets so buttered nowadays. It don't matter. Everybody's mm. so PC. Well, here's the thing. I want some... <clears throat> Before I left Chicago, I used to have these uh, Jehovah's Witnesses that come by every Tuesday. It was funny because, you know, I started that whole tour, tour Tuesday thing on Twitter. Yeah. 
and they'd come by, and I loved them because they were actually really good guys, and they would talk, and they were not one of those, I'm going to make you convert to be a Jehovah's Witness. They just talked Christianity, they talked the Bible and all that stuff. But one thing I said to them, I said, have you realized watching the news that if you look at the Bible, there was Sodom and Gomorrah, two cities. But actually now, Sodom and Gomorrah is two hemispheres. It's actually, it's, it's actually encompassed the world where there's just this stupidity. Oh, yeah. You know, and here's the thing, and this is where I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off right now. <laughs> okay? And I'm sorry about that. I, I understand your show can do that. Yeah, well, okay. let's see what you guys think about it. I'm all for, if, if you're gay, you want to get married, that's your right. But here's the thing. You're the fucking minority in this goddamn country, and our country suddenly went Skittles crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sees a rainbow. Yeah. And when I was living in the state of Illinois, our governor at that time, Pat Quinn, before he got ousted, he spent so much money in a broke state, a big state that had a credit rating lower than Louisiana, which is a poor state. Wow. You're talking, you got Chicago, you got major airports, you got major companies, you've got Boeing, you've got, yeah. oh my God, everything in there. You got Google that bought out. Uh, moral mobility. You have all these major players and you're broke. <laughs> you have a shit credit. And your biggest thing that you wanted to push was gay marriage in the state of Illinois. And, there's, and there's kids in my fucking city at the time that uh, during the winter don't even have a winter coat. Yeah. There was homeless people and this was the biggest thing you wanted to push. Right. I'm sorry. Right. Civil rights took 400 fucking years. You guys just started stepping out the closet 80 years ago, and now we're supposed to give you the biggest motherfucking respect and make laws to death fucking honor you? I'm sorry. Yeah. It's my ass. I don't even think it's they should be allowed ass. to get married. I, I don't. <laughs> uh, you could be gay. You could fuck Slim and Peek and fuck all they want, but <laughs> I don't, don't think do you that. should be getting married and, having, and raising kids. I, I don't think it's right. All I'm saying is do what you want, and that's fine. Make some right. laws to change it. Yeah. But that should not have been the biggest damn thing in the world. Exactly. We're, we're almost yeah, at war man. with Russia again. We're in a Cold War again. Yep. Russia and China now. They're aiding in Taliban, world. I think. No, no, they're the going, into, they're going in to kick their ass. Going on in the world, and this is the biggest thing she want to do. And then you know, all of the state capitals spent all of their money to make all their capital buildings fucking rainbows. Well, how about this? You know what? You had to shit on the Confederate flag for no reason. Yes. It, had a, it has a right to be there. Just like the KKK can actually get a permit to march as long as they're peaceful. Why the fuck are you going to shit on the on the Confederate flag? Why? Because some idiot goes into a fucking church and kills some fucking people? Yup. And because the Confederate flag is outside the Capitol, that's only a symbol of racism? The, fl the flag Christ. isn't racist, exactly. The flag just yeah. represents the South. And you know what's disgusting? Do you realize that we are, we are the only country in the world that pledges allegiance to a flag? <laughs> <laughs> why do you pledge allegiance to my goddamn country? That's why I served twice. Because <laughs> yeah. all my daughter is proud of me. You know what's disgusting? You know, that's why I got shrapnel coming out my left fucking shin <laughs> and little bits and pieces every goddamn day. Not for a fucking flag. <laughs> what were you saying, Pete? Well, the disgusting part about that whole church shooting is the media didn't spend time honoring those people that were killed. Instead, they just bitched about the Confederate flag. Oh. Just bitched exactly. and bitched. They paid those exactly. people no. Exactly. Who was this talking? That was uh, Pete. Pete. It's me, Pete. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, man? What's I'm up? I'm not in front of the computer. I was watching you guys all when you guys show started, but now I, I took a walk because so, I knew my phone would probably work outside the house. It doesn't work inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. No, they bitched about the Confederate flag. That became the symbol. That became the sudden symbol. The Confederate flag didn't do a goddamn thing to you. No. I mean, Chris, Chris Rock once, in one of his stand-ups, he was talking about well, let's just bring it up. We don't say he was talking about niggas. And how to fact, not nigger, niggas. And how when he goes to the cash machine, he's not looking over his shoulder for, you know, the media. He's looking over his shoulder for niggas. <laughs> so immediately what happened was let's jump on the Confederate flag. That must be the symbol of racism. No, the flag has no level of racism. It doesn't. The flag actually has a lot of pride. 
I even I own one. My grandfather is from Mississippi. And he gave it to me as a kid. I had a grandfather in the Confederate Army. He actually got shrapnel stuck in his jaw, and he lost, like, a, like his face got completely deformed from that war. Wow. <laughs> so then he knows. And what, was, what flag was he flying for? Not a goddamn flag. He was fighting for you, trying to stay alive. That's what yeah. he was doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> When I was in, when I was in Afghanistan, I didn't think about the goddamn American flag. <laughs> I thought about my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> or so, yeah, exactly. I thought about getting home to my daughter. That's what I thought about. Not my American daughter. No, my daughter. Yeah. Who was very upset that her dad went back into the military. You know, but she understood, and as best she could, as best she could. And I know, I know it upset her, and I know I can never forgive, I can never ask for the forgiveness that I chose with a booming career as an engineer and also writing that I just chose to go back in the military at 32. And my daughter was young, and um, she was very upset. And I tried to do my best to explain, and she just simply gave me this, it was this quiet aside that said, okay, Dad. I understand. And I knew she did it. Wow. She was angry and she was still upset that her dad, because also at the school she was going in, Naperville, Illinois, what really good school systems out there. She was going to one of the best grade schools at the time. And she was in the, uh, she just got into the eighth grade when I went back. And a lot of her fellow students, parents were already deployed in honor of the, the, the Bush war. Wow, you know, and um, so she was. She was, and she actually used to join groups at the school to go and, you know, just it was like these almost like counseling groups, but just like a lot of kids who were doing the same thing. They would just go and they would talk about it and stuff like that. And I feel bad that I did that to my daughter. Yeah, and I didn't realize at the time that I was doing that much to her. I kind of found out after the fact. I was like already sworn in and already <laughs> in tech school. But I found out my daughter was Stuck done it. Like shit. Yeah, if I if I knew uh, you were going to do all that, I would have just simply just donated to the cause or something. You know. <laughs> I love the story you had about her though, thinking there were uh, monsters in a oh, bedroom. That yeah, was yeah. the monster. Oh, the part that was left out. There was a part that was left out. I gotta say this. You love it. You love this. One day I'm sitting on a computer, and we had a one-bedroom apartment, okay? This, you understand, this was a one-bedroom apartment, and her bed was on one side, our bed was on the other, and wow. it was our first apartment, you know, I was, I was only making like 25 a year at the time, and I had a wife that was a full-time college student at the time, uh, going to Columbia, uh, she went from our Institute to Columbia, and I was like broke as shit. Wow. Anyway, I hear this banging, just boom. I can hear it sliding across the floor. It was all wood floor apartment, and boom, boom, boom. And I walk in, I'm like, what are you doing? And she had, my mother had made her one of those riding ponies, you know, with a stick and a crocheted uh, horse head. <laughs> you know, your little kids, you see back in the 50s, little kids riding around, the little riding pony. Anyway, she was sliding the stick under the bed. And I said, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm killing the monsters. <laughs> 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 and this was in the middle of the day. And at that point, I sat her down, and then she, she, you know, she already said it was already things in the closet, things in her bed. And here's the thing. Because I grew up scared as fuck of every shadow in the world, I believed her. And that's why I came up with that way to get rid of the monsters. And thank you. I mean, it's, it's honestly God, I actually had to, when I was responding to Gigi Collins on that interview, I actually went and got the box that I have a lot of my daughter's stuff, including the bear, still there. Yeah. It's, cute little nappy bear because she used to suck on the nose of it. <laughs> <laughs> the nose is gone. But there's no nose and, and it's nappy. It's just this nappy little bear. It's disgusting. Probably, you know, we're going to put it in a time capsule and I cure diseases like 100 years or some shit. <laughs> but I had to get the note. And, uh, and the note, I, just so I can give exact verbatim, but I'm one of those collectors, you know, everything that my, I actually have a lot of report cards and stuff, like fourth grade and crap like that. I don't know, I, 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 in that terms, I'm, I should be the the mom dad. I collected all these things where mom didn't save anything. I got the hair, the first haircut, still in a baggie. Yes, yes, oh, oh, my daughter, she was born, she was a Wookiee. My daughter is a fucking Wookiee. I'm like, seriously, she, she's a five foot one and a half Wookiee. She was born with a she was born. She came out she was she was she was eleven days late, had to be induced, came out with a full head of hair, 
I'm talking below her ears, full thick black. And by her one birthday, and, and, and Rob, later I'll send you a picture of her one-year-old birthday. It, she's sitting there by the big number one. You know, you go to Sears photo. Yeah. Because we're, we're poor shit. So we're in Sears photo, and she's sitting by the big number one, and her hair is sitting, is under her, under her body. Oh, and wow. And grew that much. And her arms, her legs, her back, and she's going to be mad at me about this. Her butt, everything was the sun was just covered cool hair. She was like a little little Ewok. And My son like, William oh, had hairy ears. His ears were covered in like fur. I was like, "What is that, dude?" <laughs> yeah, wow. But uh, she's my light. Uh, she's always been the light of my life. Um, always. I mean, I always wanted. I, I I actually when I found out that we weren't married at the time when um, when Jessica was. See, we were we already engaged. Then we found out we say, okay, well let's 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 speed up the wedding. And we had a medieval wedding as a matter of fact. It was it was interesting. We have a, we had a church in Chicago that was a medieval it was actually a medieval Irish church that was relocated into Chicago. And we had it and the the minister even was willing because we're all in costume and the woman the minister actually wore a monk's robe. He was cool as hell. The Unitarian church, he was cool wow. as hell. So anyway, um, when when she was born or she was on her way, I said it's going to be a girl, and everybody's like, "Oh no, it's going to be a little boy." Especially the way my wife was carrying her, she was like really big child and carried low. Oh, it's going to be a boy. I said it's going to be a girl, and the reason I wanted a girl because I knew what type of fuck up little boy I was. I didn't want that shit. So I wanted, a, you know, I wanted a little girl. And I got my wish. You know, my dad, he always wanted twin daughters, as I said. He got it on his birthday. I got the girl. And luckily, she wasn't a knucklehead. She speaks multiple languages. <laughs> uh, I'm very proud of her. Um, she's now in Southern California, way on the other side of the country. Yeah. And, <clears throat> um, but, you know, I'm very proud of my daughter. And, you know, and she doesn't read my horrors, by the way. Oh, no. She actually won't. Nope, nope. She won't read it. She reads. Um, she likes my my little uh, quirky poems and things like that. She'll read to a certain degree. And at one point, I used to get upset because I'm like, "You do realize that this type of this is what pays for all your shit." Yeah. All angry. Calories. This pays for your yeah the money your dad send you. But then I I, I I had to do a little soul search and realize, wait, she can't put that. In the same context as her dad. Of her father, yeah. That's cool. And then I understood. And then I called, I actually called her. Uh, this was when she was like 17. And I called her, and she was living in the suburb of Chicago at the time. No longer living with me because I went in the military. I didn't want a military brat. And I apologized and explained that your dad doesn't understand why. And it just bettered our relationship as dad, daughter, and even friends. Because now I understood why you didn't read your dad's stuff. And yeah, it made sense. You know, I, I guess I, if my dad wrote about, you know, killing kids or killing women or something like that, I probably wouldn't want to read it. Yeah. Right. You know, my, my dad's the one who taught me how to shoot. My dad's the first one who taught me how to build a fire, build a snowman, everything else like that. Um, I, I could have put him in the same context as that, you know. Yeah. So I understood where my daughter was coming from. That's cool. No, actually, I, there's one other joke I just want to throw out here because you know you guys have on your tagline for Ustream a lot of jokes. What well, is one more? I just I read today, and it said a redheaded stepsister said to her blonde stepsister, "I just slept with a Brazilian," and the blonde says, "You fucking whore." By the way, how many is a Brazilian? You know, so, um... <laughs> that one took me a little bit, too. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, Brazilian, like the they number just... of how many is a Brazilian. <laughs> gotcha. They just... sneak up on they you. They sneak yeah. up on you, yeah. Nice. No, it just means slim. You just not had enough bitters. Get right, yeah, back. that's, you're yeah. probably, you're absolutely right. It kind of creeps up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need a couple of shots of doers or something like that to yes. go with it, man. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Have you ever uh, almost finished a book and then never finished it? 
Yes, I have. Um, I have one that's sitting there that uh, I'm not happy with. I I started writing, and I was really excited about it, and then something about the characters changed, and I can't kill them right now. I mean, I want to kill them. I mean, that's the good thing about being a writer. You can just kill with impunity. <laughs> but at least you got to kill, you know. And, you know, but the thing is, you know, I've been labeled as a misogynist because I kill women <laughs> in some of my stories. Well, okay, let me, I'm going to address that right now. Do you give a fuck about a 30-year-old guy who just got killed in a movie? Unless he was, like, important. Like, he was a single father with two kids, and then the, the raptor comes out the woods and, and bites his head off. Mm. You don't care. No. What is it? It's a dude. We're expendable, man. Come on. <laughs> All of you sitting around here with your earphones on and your mics in front of you and your beers, you're expendable. No one cares about you. If all the shows happened today, no one would give a fuck. Okay? True. But if you are this woman, you kill them. And that's a writer's trick. That's a horror writer's trick. And, but, and when people call me a misogynist, it's funny. It's like, did you not realize that I write horror? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I kill motherfuckers for, for a living. My mom <laughs> said it. She, she tells that to people. She goes, what your dad do for a living? He used to be an engineer, but he kills people for a living. And she loves doing it to people. She even did it to her boss. I thought it was cool to shit. She did her boss. Her boss was like, like really weary around there for a while. <laughs> but anyway, the next thing you kill, some people say, oh, kill the elderly. That's scary. No, it's not. Because they already lived their life. They're yeah. already uh, dead. They got yeah, you're already near death. You know, you're you're just you're just one Prozac away from a heart on that won't go away. Yeah. <laughs> you're just sitting there waiting with their arms out. Yeah. Kill me next. Varicose veins throbbing. Exactly. Fuck them. So you don't kill the you don't kill the elderly unless you build up the character. But women. S- Slim kills the elderly. Yeah. The second, the second easiest target though, and this actually took me a while. And it actually took, and uh, it's not on my blog. I never made it active. But the I tonight is Flakes of Snowman. It, it was published originally in a magazine called Hanscom's Choice that came out quarterly uh, back in 1995, six. Anyway, you kill children. Oh, but it took me forever to do that. And in in my story, Place of Snowman, it was my daughter because was true. Actually, all the events that led up to the story were true. Wow. But I couldn't write my daughter into it. I had made him a boy, so I made my daughter a boy. So all my earlier times I ever killed a a, a, a child, yeah, you know, I based it off my daughter. Kind of saw so murdering my own child. Like, well, you're a perfect candidate to die. <laughs> <laughs> you just took all the you just took all the money out your dad's wallet and put it down the heater vent. I'm going to kill you in my writing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I couldn't make it a girl. I, it was actually always a boy. Yeah. And in the story, the boy's name was Toby, and uh, the guy was me. In the story, it was by a beach off of a park that was near by where we lived. And uh, in flakes of snow, man, just to give you an idea, the snow the wind was coming out of the west, but the flakes. The snowflakes were falling from the east, so it was going against the wind. And that actually happened on that day. My daughter wanted to go sledding during the winter. I had a cold, and I told her I can't go out, and she was really upset, and I stepped out to have a cigarette. And I'm standing on the side of our apartment building, and the wind was blowing really bad from the west. And I was staying halfway up the stairs, but the snowflakes were coming out of the east, and it freaked me out. And that night, I wrote that story based off that. Wow. Because... There should be no reason snowflakes are falling against the wind. I mean, like, they have some godly power, like, we we are Jedi. You know, <laughs> this, this is not going to happen. And so anyway, um, kids, uh, it's very hard to write them to kill them. Yeah. But I think if you want be. the reader, if you want the reader to really empathize or to really be afraid, yeah, kill a kid. Kill a kid. Uh, the gentleman had to sit here and write. Kill, I kill women or kill. I'm gonna kill plenty of dudes. I have a story on my uh, as a thing. You know, I'm called a misogynist, and they 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 are mocking my blog. Well, go read the, the story of the attic on my blog. It's a dude. He's got his guts ripped out. He's got a shotgun. There's critters. 
some form of creature, and they're trying to kill him. And they are getting him, you know? As a dude. I mean, and then when I write women, I write them as super women. They might die, but they're still super women. <laughs> so, yes, I'm a, I'm a misogynist because I want, I, I eventually kill Superwoman. Yes, I'm sorry. I am very sorry that, yes, she was a wonderful character and she was a woman, but I had to kill the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what about that uh, Guns N' Roses song? I used to love her, but I had to kill her. Hey, I, I also love this. You know, I'm, this is where I probably lose more followers, but you saw the original cover of the Guns N' Roses album, right? Appetite? Appetite for Destruction. Yeah. I got the t-shirt. Now, who says it's not hot? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my friend Dave in high school. He bought that album, the tape, at least five times because his parents kept finding it and throwing it out. He had to just keep her buying it. And he was the only kid who had it, and he would make copies for all of us. Oh, damn. Oh, God, tape. <laughs> Do you ever try to make a mixtape, a real true mixtape for a girl back in the day? Pete makes me mixtapes. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of gay, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a complete loss. I, I did know a dude who made one for another dude, no, and I'm like, what is wrong with you, man? No, man, I'm going to quote Riley from the Boondocks. <laughs> Nigga, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, man, I mean, I'm a writer. I've been a writer for a long time. I write under many genres, under different names. And that, that, you know, some people are upset about that because I do write in different genres and I write in different names and I don't share those names. Well, what's the point of having a pen name yet you share your identity? Exactly. You, man, go on fucking Twitter, man. Look at some of these writers. By the way, I write under the name of Charles Dick. Well, what the, why did why did you just give up your identity, man? <laughs> yeah. I mean, first, Charles Dick is kind of a gay name, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Willard. That's right. My name is Dick Willer. <laughs> That's what Pete's name is. His, uh, birth, his Christian hello. name is Dick Willer. That's right. You're like, hello, all you people. My name is Dick Willer. I'm coming here right now. I'm going to hear you read my Western. I'm Dick Willer. <laughs> I know Come on. It, just, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but anyway, if, if, if people get upset about that, because they're writing under different names. Well, right. their names are there for a reason. Um, they found their own voice. Okay. And I started to write them. And and they are who they are. I mean, it's not some civil thing. Trust me, I've already had clinically checked. But it's it's not some civil thing that I have this split personality. But when one of them decide to start talking, I write them. So it's like uh, stepping. It's like stepping into the shoes of another person. It is. It, it honestly is. And you know, no bullshit awesome. aside, it really is. Um, I have one that writes more thriller. And, you know, and truly, the diff big difference between a thriller and a horror, they're the same thing, same ice cream, different flavor. And the different flavor is, a uh, you know, thriller is always a person. In a horror, it could be a monster. Wow. I never knew that. Never can a thriller book have a monster, because it can't be called thriller. Huh. So in a thriller, it's wow. always a human, mortal person that can die. So when you shoot that motherfucker, they go and die. Look at the movie, uh, oh, God, the original, uh, come on, come on, come on, Michael Mann directed it, uh, original Hannibal Lecter, come on. Oh, uh, Silence of the Lambs. No, no, Red. No, 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 before Red No, no. Oh, no. Manhunter. Man Manhunter, Hunter. yes. Yeah. Manhunter. That's Man it. Manhunter, the guy might have been strong and everything, and he had this big-ass handgun with... It was it was it was mercury floating suspension hydroshock ammunition to shoot this son of a bitch and he shot him he died what? he was mortal. Well, what about the movies oh, with like the mortal killer that gets shot like fifty thousand times and still even walking? Michael Myers. Like, is that, Michael oh, Myers. Is, is that considered okay, horror or thriller where, at that point? That's, no, that's when it, that's when you step into the lines of horror because if I keep shooting a son of a bitch, you're immortal. You, I'm, a, I'm a damn sh I'm a damn good shot. <laughs> Right. You know, I love the movie. Um, my favorite gangster movie is Moose Crossing. And one of the lines in there was the first shot, you put him down. But then the second shot, you always put one in the head. You know, if I, if I shoot 
Mitchie, you're gonna fall. The first rule of zombie land, double tap. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Double tap. Exactly. So if I put you down and I put one in your head or I put two in your head, <laughs> and you get back up, now it's four. Yeah. Yeah. You put two in your head and you don't get back up, and your brains are sitting there streamed out across behind your head like a streamer is from a party thing. Then it's thriller. It's thriller. Gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome, so, dude. So, like, Scream would be considered a horror because the guys get shot, like, 50,000 times or stabbed 100 times yeah. and he's still moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know one recent horror film that actually freaked me out? And it, recent was, okay, let's just put it back and let's put it in context. Within the last 15 years that actually freaked me out, I know some of my Twitter people will be like, are you serious? <laughs> that actually freaked me out was the Blair Witch Project and then Scream. Yep. They freak me agree. out. They're scary movies. And Scream, Scream's a weird one because it was kind of like a parody of itself, but yeah, it was still exactly. like really scary. Scream! And that's the thing, the directors of Scream, they designed it to be like a B-rated movie. Yeah. They wanted to make fun of it, but it freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, scary, yeah. yeah. The stuff I was that... living on the north side of Chicago when it came out, and I'm looking at and I have these big bay windows on the back of my apartment that overlook this stupid little garden that I couldn't grow shit in. They just, I think they like brought in dirt from Chernobyl or some shit. <laughs> <they can die. laughs> I'm standing there and I just can picture someone with that mask and outside. That I used mask to walk around my, I shit you not, I used to walk around my apartment when I was 40 caliber. On my side. <laughs> he, they, they did such a good job in that movie because he would appear like in windows and stuff and reflections. Yeah. So yeah. it really get you like you're looking around like, where is he? Somewhere. <laughs> the stuff that freaks me out the most is the body change horror like Cronenberg. Um, the all, birds. A lot of the stuff he did. Um, even the thing, man. The, the John Carpenter's thing. Right? Yeah. Just the fact that you can get yeah. infected with something and then you, you mutate. Into, I specifically have a problem just this, with that. Yeah, you know, like you actually, actually said something, and, you know, people can say this is bullshit, but, you know, I can, I can, and Rob Slim, I can give you numbers to my older twin sisters, and they will, they will testify to this. <laughs> Years ago, we were kids, and my mother, they were, the birds was coming on. Oh, on, like, yeah. Channel 9 or something in Chicago. Yeah. WGN, and we watched it. And I kid you not, after we saw it during the day, we're still the daytime, we're sitting on the porch with my mom, we had this, we had this rocker swing on our porch in Beverly in Chicago, and the trees filled up with crows. <laughs> and we, and me and my older sister, shit, I swear to God. And... <laughs> It was like it was like as soon as we saw the movie, now the crow, all the big, it was in the fall. All the trees were full of crows. They're all sitting there, you know, making that noise. And you know, you think I shot that night? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> man! <laughs> Shit, Michael, we have to let you go, dude. I didn't sleep. <laughs> By the way, gentlemen, I just got a notification on my phone that my battery's gonna die. Oh, I got about I got about ten minutes more with you guys. We got we, we have to cut it, dude. We're yeah. we're getting to the next interview. Oh, okay. Well then, damn, I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was great though. It was fucking yeah, awesome, man. Thank you so much, dude. But, but to be honest, I'm gonna tell you guys, I've, I've watched all your past shows on YouTube. I've you know, and I as I said, I. It's definitely one podcast that that entertains me, informs me. You guys are great. Cool. You guys are some really cool dudes, all of you. I'm gonna, as I said, I, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna head that direction up toward just north a little here because you know now I'm now in Virginia. I'm gonna head north. I got some people I'm seeing in New York anyway. I'd love to sit back. The case is on me. Let's just sit back and just drink like stupid monkeys and <laughs> talk shit. That'd be awesome, dude. That would be great, dude. That'd be cool. Because uh, it'd be great to sit with all you guys, get to know y'all as persons, and well, in person, as yeah. persons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because you guys are definitely not animatronic Disney Walt Disney bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I, I've i actually I've actually listened some to some podcasts from some people that was the anti Viagra. I'm telling you, my dick was so fucking limp. I had a vagina at the end of the day. I'm not kidding, man. I, I was like, is that my clit? No, let me rub it. Let's see what happens. I'm serious, dude. 
some serious just bullshit. Just garbage. But guys, That's you guys an are wonderful. Compliment. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. I do, and honestly, I have shared your guys' blog and your or well, your actual channel with so many people. Thank you. And they have they have told me that they've gone out and they laughed their ass off and listened. And you guys, you know, you know, screw the controversy. That's that's one thing about live radio is people are going to get pissed off. Yeah. And just like a writer, you don't have to like what I write. And you probably I don't write everything that everyone's going to like. I actually have stories out there that I hate, but other people like them, and that's the funny thing. <laughs> but uh, but in the end. As long as you can stand and pull your jeans up and zip your zipper in the front, man, do, do your thing, man. Don't catch your dick in there, because that hurts. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, shit. Real quick, before I leave. I was a sophomore in high school, going to Whitney Young High School in Chicago, one of the best high schools in, Chicago, in the world, actually. It's, it's like top ranked and always been for, like, years. And I had actually got my, I, I'm not circumcised, but I got my foreskin stuck in my zipper. Oh, I was oh, oh, so, oh yes, yes. So I show up late for class, and the teacher was named Miss McClinton. She was an English teacher. Yeah. And she said to me, I came in my tennis place, sat right down, I'm in pain. She's like, okay, will you explain to me why you are late for the class? Why don't you tell the whole class why you're late? I said, you don't want me to do this. Oh, no, I want you to do this. I actually stood up and said, and I looked around in the class, 27 students, and I said, I went to the bathroom, and I got my dick caught in my zipper. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know how many, do you know how many girls sent me notes during that class after that? Like, damn, he got his dick caught in his zipper. How long is he? So anyway, so and needless to say, mass hysteria and bedlam broke out in that class, and she just could not, and I, I was, I was pissy. My mother worked just one block away from Whitney Young, so it was like, if you want to send me down to the dean's office, that's cool. My mother would walk over here, but I was in a lot of pain, and I even told her, I said, I'd rather not say why I'm late. She's like, no, you will stand up and tell everyone. Okay, well, let's give you both, let's give you both barrels, bitch. <laughs> let's, do it. let's do it with extreme prejudice. <laughs> All right, Michael, why don't you, before your phone dies, tell everybody where they can find your books or where they can follow you on Twitter, and then we're going to have to let you go, All right, man? I got, I, got a, I got a tons of books coming out coming beginning of 2016. Uh, I got three in the, or three that's coming out originally. Um, there's two bands from um, And you find me at Adsign, Michael Frost Chai. Yes, it's still for Chicago. You find me on Twitter. And that's probably the only way you're going to find me on social media because I don't do the Facebook shit other than going out to like page other writers and stuff like that. So I'm not active there. But, hey, and everyone, please, listen, 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 listen to Rob and Slim Show. It's really great. And love these guys. They're genuine. So get you on the caller. And it was great talk with you guys. Thank you, Michael. We really appreciate it. We had a lot of fun. Oh, man. Oh, by the way, all you yeah. guys. What's that? Don't let your don't let your meat loaf. All right, <laughs> all right man. Uh, all, right. <laughs> all right, people. You gotta take it easy. All right, later, brother. Take it easy. Later, bro. Bye. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I'm gonna answer. Yes. All right. <laughs> he was awesome. <laughs> he was. <laughs>